All right, so torque. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the basics of torque. The equation for torque, the unit for torque, the sign convention for torque. Uh, this this uh, R here, R has a very special name, which is called the lever arm. So we're going to go over the, the basics of torque. But is that the main thing in Chapter 8? Nope. What's the main thing in Chapter 8? The application of torque. Okay, so here you go, the basics of torque. So let's start off with what torque is. If I were you, I'd write this down. Uh, my definition for torque is it's the ability of a force to rotate an object. It's the ability of a force to rotate an object. So torque is all about rotation. If you have high torque, if you have like, you know, a lot of torque, what does that mean? you have a big ability to rotate things. You know, the, for the force has a large ability to rotate the object. If you have a low torque, what does that mean? Not much ability to rotate. So the torque equation is this. Torque is equal to force times R, where R is a distance. Now look, what does this equation look very similar to? It looks very similar to something we did in chapter five, work, equals force times distance. Or I think I said it's actually force times displacement, F delta X. Well, look, you're basically going force times a distance or displacement there. What is torque? Torque is force times a distance. It's very similar with one key difference. Does anybody remember what had to be true in the work equation? In fact, I think this is the way I taught it to you. It's, it's at, this is wrong. It should be force times displacement. What has to be true when you're using this work equation? Yo. Uh huh. The force and the displacement have to be parallel to each other. You guys remember that? The force and the displacement have to be parallel. In the torque equation, the force and the distance must be perpendicular. Now, if you read the textbook, the textbook tells you that torque equals force times this distance r sine theta. Now, what's this sine theta all about? Well, you'll see in the next couple slides, um, will the force always be perpendicular to the distance in, in your given problem? No. So that's where the sine theta comes in. I don't like this sine theta. The way I do it is I say torque is force times distance. And you have to know that the force and the distance must be perpendicular. Now, what if you're given a situation where the force and the distance are not perpendicular? Then you're going to have to do some what? Some trig to, to make them perpendicular. So just remember, it's force times distance well, where they have to be perpendicular to each other. Now, um, the unit for torque. So what do we measure force in? Newton. What do we measure distances in? Meter. Okay. Who is on their physics game? What is a Newton times a meter? It's technically, it is a joule. However, when you're doing torque problems, don't call it a joule. What we do is we leave it as Newton meter. When you're doing torque problems, even though technically a Newton meter is a joule, just leave it as Newton meter. Okay? So the unit for torque is Newton times meter. And what else? Lever arm. Now, guys, what word do we get from lever arm? We get the word lev leverage. So what I have here is I have a big wrench and a small wrench. Okay, so what do we use wrenches for? To turn things, right? So how many of you have been in the situation? So for those watching the video, you know, so here's what we have right here. We got a wrench. So let me draw a wrench. Goes be like that. Oh man, I'm not a good drawer. Not bad, Spaldo. There, okay, here's a wrench. Now, wrenches turn things, right? How many of you have had the situation where you put the wrench on the nut and you start to go, push as hard as you can and you're like, and it still doesn't turn? You're like, oh man, what do you need to do? If you're in that situation where you're trying to turn the wrench, but the wrench won't turn because the nut is so tight, you got to get a bigger wrench. 
you need more leverage. The word leverage comes from lever arm, okay? So let me explain what lever arm is. Lever arm is the perpendicular distance from the axis to the line along the force, okay? So what, we're, what we have here in this diagram, what we have in this diagram here is we're looking at the top of a door. So imagine like you're hanging from the ceiling. Over here is where the door, that's the hinge. That's where the axis is. This is where the door rotates right here. And here's the doorknob. So you push on the door at the doorknob perpendicular to the door. Now, the lever arm for this situation, so what's the definition of lever arm? It's the distance from where to where. From the axis to the force perpendicular. So check it out. Here's the axis. Do, 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 do. Go this way over to the force. Is that perpendicular? Is this distance perpendicular to the force? Yep. So what would be the lever arm for this situation? It would just be this distance R right there, right? Because R is perpendicular to the force, okay? So look, when you get a bigger wrench, if you go from having a smaller wrench, so here's a little tiny wrench, right? Here's a little tiny wrench to a big wrench. Okay, which of these wrenches is going to give you more leverage? The bigger one or the smaller one? The bigger one, because look, here's the axis. The dot right there is the axis. Okay, so say you have a force over there and a force there. So look, this would be a small lever arm. There's a lever arm. This would be big lever arm. So you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck with the longer wrench, with the same force, just simply because your lever arm is bigger. Does that make sense? Okay, now let's look at situations that are a little trickier. <clears throat> okay, so here we have the same situation. So here's the axis. This is where the door, we're looking at the top of the door, like you're hanging from the ceiling. Okay, so there's the axis. <clears throat> but now, and who would ever do this? I don't know. This would never, whoever pushes on a door <clears throat> at an angle, the answer is nobody, right? How do you push on a door? You push that way, right? So let's just pretend you have a force applied to the door at an angle. Well, what would the lever arm be here? The lever arm here, well, if you go from the axis straight over to the force, is that a perpendicular distance right there? No. So how do we find the lever arm? Let me show you. Notice here it says line along the force. So what you do is you extend the force, a line along the force, aha! Now you can draw in your lever arm. This distance right here would be the lever arm, right? From the axis to the line along the force, perpendicular. So how would you solve for that? Let's say the door is L, the length of the door is L, so this would be theta in here. So what would R be equal to? R would be sine theta L. You could solve for it. And it's smaller, right? You're not going to get as much torque there. Uh, the lever arm is smaller than L. So it's better, if you want the door to rotate, it's better to push on the door how? Like that, because you get a bigger lever arm. Okay, one more. Okay, so now what's happening here, and who would ever do this? Nobody. So what, what's happening is, so here's the axis. Somebody is pulling on this door away from the hinge. Is that going to rotate the door? No, dude. How much torque is this going to cause? So over here is the axis where the door rotates. If you pull on the door away from the axis, what's the torque going to be? Zero. Now, why is the torque going to be zero? Is it going to be because the force is zero or the lever arm is zero? The lever arm is zero. Now, why is the lever arm zero? Well, look, where does a line along the force go? Ready? Here's the force. Line along the force. Do, 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 do. 
Oh my goodness. The line along the force passes through the axis. What's the distance from the axis to the line along the force? Zero. That's going to give you zero torque. You guys smell me? You get it? Okay, man. That is the basic. Oh, I forgot one thing. Sign convention. The sign convention for torque. Now look, what's been our sign convention up to this point? When I say sign convention, you think about this. You're like, oh, up, plus, down, minus, you know, plus, minus. This is what you think about when I say sign convention. But what's torque all about? Rotation. Our sign convention for torque is going to be clockwise. That way is clockwise. Counterclockwise. CCW, counterclockwise. Now look, one of these will be plus. The other minus. Does it matter which one's plus and which one's minus? Not at all. As long as you're consistent, you could say that clockwise is plus, counterclockwise is minus. Perfect. As long as you're consistent and you don't change it. Or if you're like, no, I want it the other way. Fine. Make that plus, that minus. It doesn't matter which way is plus and which way is minus. There is an official sign convention. I'll be honest with you, I forget what it is. I think it's I think the official sign convention is counterclockwise plus and clockwise minus, but it don't matter. All right, now, is that the main thing? No. So now you know what torque is. Now let's talk about the main thing. So here's where it gets interesting. Here's where it gets mighty interesting. Okay. Torque and the second condition the second condition for equilibrium. You guys already know the first condition. Anybody know what the first condition was? You learned it back in chapter four. So let's review what equilibrium means. What does equilibrium mean? Equilibrium, there's two ways to express equilibrium and they both mean the same thing. So look at this coffee cup sitting on the table. That's how I like to start my morning. Get my cup of coffee. Start me out right. So look, here's my coffee cup right here. Sitting on the table. Why is that coffee cup in equilibrium? Well, what does equilibrium mean? Equilibrium is a fancy name for not accelerating. Not accelerating. Zero acceleration. Well, guys, if an object has zero acceleration, well, what do we know about F net? <coughs> F net. F net equals MA, if your acceleration is zero, then guess what? The net force is zero. So these are the two ways you could say, you could describe equilibrium by saying, okay, equilibrium is no acceleration, or you could say equilibrium is where the net force equals zero, okay? That's what equilibrium is. Next screen. Okay, is it possible is it possible for an object for an object to have no net force no net force on it but still accelerate you guys follow what i said because what did we just say equilibrium is when the object is not accelerating which means there's no net force is it possible for the net force to be zero which means the forces are canceling, but it still accelerates. Yes, you gotta think about rotation. It has, to do with, it has to do with rotation. So I want you to focus on the propeller of this airplane, okay? So if you look at the propeller of this airplane, let's put a downward force on the left. So we have a force acting down, and we'll say it's 100 Newtons. Let's call that force one. And then on the other side of the propeller, we're gonna put force two, which is 100 Newtons. So we have 100 Newtons down and 100 Newtons up. What's the net force gonna be for this situation? Zero. Is it gonna be equilibrium? No, because what's gonna happen? The axis is in the middle, right there. There's the axis. What's going to happen in this situation? And let's just say that the forces stay perpendicular to the propeller. 
what would happen to the propeller? It's going to what? It's going to start to accelerate with an angular acceleration. Do you guys follow that? The forces are canceling, but the torques are not. So we have what's called an angular acceleration. Okay, so long story short, here's what you got to know. The two conditions for equilibrium, the first one is the sum of the forces must be zero. That goes back to chapter four, right? You learned that in chapter four. What's the second thing that has to be true? The sum of the torques must equal zero. So F net equals zero and torque net equals zero. Okay? The forces must cancel and the torques must cancel. If both of those things are true, I guarantee it's equilibrium. It won't accelerate. All right, so here's a problem. All right, so we got a boy and a girl sitting on a seesaw. The mass of the board is 100 kilograms. So where are you going to draw mg for the board? In the center. So we got the, the girl on the left, the boy on the right. You got the mass of the girl. The girl's 27 kilograms. The boy is 45 kilograms. The girl is 1.5 meters from the fulcrum. Do you guys know what the fulcrum is? Fulcrum is right there where it's balancing. Um, so you're going to find the normal force supporting the board. Now, why does it make sense that there's a normal force? Because is this board balancing on a surface? Yeah, so there's going to be a normal force supporting everything, right? There's a little surface there. Okay, so what's the normal force? Then I want you to calculate where the boy must be sitting so that the board doesn't rotate, right? In other words, so the torques cancel. Okay, so we have, I'll give you guys like four minutes. Room to solve it. Does everybody kind of have this copied down? Okay, so look, we're going to do a free body diagram for the board. Okay, so there's the board, okay? And look, so we're told that the mass of the board is 100 kilograms, so where do we put mg for the board itself? In the middle, because that's where the center of mass is. So mg for a 100 kilogram board is 980, right? 100 times 9.8. That's 980 Newtons. The girl is over here. She's 27 kilograms, right? 27. So 27 times 9.8 is 264.6. That's mg for the girl. Uh, the boy is over here. He's 45 kilograms. So 45 times 9.8, that's 441. So these are all the forces acting on the board. Now there's one more force. Remember, this, this board is resting on a fulcrum. It's resting on a point. So there has to be a normal force right here. Now, this is a torque problem. Whenever you do torque problems, the axis is important. The axis is right there. There's the axis. Why is the axis important? Because that's where our distances get measured from. So, for example, what's the distance that we were told from the girl, so here's the girl over here. This is the girl. The distance from the girl over to the axis is what? 1.5. Is that perpendicular? Is the distance perpendicular to the force? Yes. Okay, the boy is over here, right? What's the distance from the boy over to the force? Let's call that x, right? That's, we're looking for this. That's x. Is that perpendicular to the force? Yes. Okay. Sign conventions. Sign conventions. Uh, now this force over here, the girl. Is the girl, is her weight trying to rotate the board clockwise or counterclockwise? Her weight is trying to rotate the board that way, which is what? 
That's counterclockwise. So I'm going to label this CCW. Okay, the boy over here, his weight is trying to rotate the board clockwise. So what should we say? Should we say clockwise plus or clockwise minus? Let's say it doesn't matter. As long as, you, as long as you're consistent, you're fine. So let's say that clockwise is plus, counterclockwise is minus, okay, F for torque. Um, all right, how are we going to find the normal force? The first question is find the normal force. Are we going to find the normal force? There's two things we can do. We can sum forces and we can sum torques, right? That's what's going to be happening in Chapter 8. In Chapter 8, you can sum forces and you can sum torques. If we want to find the normal force, how are we going to get the normal force? Torques or forces? Forces. Let's just sum the forces to get the normal force. So summing the forces. Oh, and by the way, what's the sign convention for force? Is it clockwise, counterclockwise? Uh, the sign convention for force is just up plus down minus, right? So here's what you do. You go normal force up, minus 264.6, minus 980, minus 441. If I gave this to you back in chapter four, it would have been the easiest thing ever. Uh, what is the sum of the forces always equal? MA, but is, is, the, is it accelerating? No, it's just sitting there, right? So it goes to zero. Okay, so you take this and you solve this for normal force, which comes out as 1,685. What does it come out to? I forget. Okay. So the normal force is 1,685.6. Basically, guys, the idea is this. The upward normal force must be canceling the downward forces. Okay? All right. Now, how do we find out where the boy must be sitting? Where must the boy sit to balance the seesaw? Well, this is going to involve torque because it's a distance. Okay, so we're going to say clockwise is plus. Hey, by the way, guys, how many torques do we have? There are four forces. We have one, two, three, four. There are four forces, but how many torques? Only two. Which two forces have no torque? Those guys. Why do these guys have zero torque? Because the what's the torque equation? Torque equals force times lever arm. Both of these guys, the R is zero because they're on the axis. Forces on the axis cause no torque. Okay, so let's sum the torques up. Ready? So we have two torques. So summing the torques, so we got this guy over here. So let's start with the positive one. So starting with this guy. So we're going to go 441 newtons. Okay, what's the distance? X. Okay, are these guys perpendicular? they got to be perpendicular. Are they perpendicular? Yes, so we're good. Okay, now come to this guy. Minus, because he's minus, uh, 264.6. Okay, what's the distance for that force? 1.5. Are they perpendicular? Yes. The, the torques will cancel. Now look, what if the torques do not cancel? Well, then you get an angular acceleration, which we're not going to do in this class. AP Physics B doesn't cover that. If you want to find out what happens if the torques don't cancel, then you take AP Physics C. They talk about that in there. Okay? So we take this. The only thing missing is X. X is 0.9. Basically, the idea is the torques cancel and the forces cancel.